Today's episode of The Aggressive Life has adult themes and adult content. In the long run, passivity won't pay off. It never pays off. If you want a life of meaning and transcendence, you're going to have to move. Aggression doesn't have to be toxic or damaging. Healthy aggression risks. It builds new things. It breaks through barriers. It's the key to living a life that matters. I'm Brian Tome, and this is The Aggressive Life. Well, welcome to The Aggressive Life. I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell and The Hero's Journey. The hero's journey is all about a set standard process that every hero in every story goes through to become a hero. And if you want to make a lot of money, one of the first things to understand is that everybody is their own hero. Everybody wants to be a hero. We're not inspired by people who want us to believe that they're a hero. We want to believe that we are the hero, that we are coming under attack, that we are being groomed for a higher purpose, that we are going to live a life of sacrifice and things are going to change because of what's happening in our life. We all have this inner narrative that we believe something is to be about our life or our life is supposed to be mattering more than it is right now. We want to be the hero. And in every hero story, there is a guide Think Luke Skywalker, he had Obi-Wan Kenobi. Every hero story, there is a guide that calls things out on us that takes us to the next place. I've had just a lot of people ask me, hey, could we get together? I just like to get get together. I like to buy you a beer. I like to pick your brain. I'd like you to build into me. Could you mentor me? And I'm very, very honored by all those requests. And unfortunately, I have to say no to the vast majority of those requests just because of the limitations of my time and the number of people I'm currently already, already guiding. But all of us need a guide, whether it's somebody who's sitting down having a beer with us and knows about our life, or it's maybe somebody who we may never actually meet face to face, but they're going to drop some truth on us that's going to guide how we go in the future. Today is one of those days because today I am recording in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here to interact with a guy who is the founder and CEO of a company we're gonna talk about called Groove Life. It's a pretty sexy company. We're gonna talk about that in a moment, but I gotta tell what's really sexy about this guy. It's the aggressive life. And what is more aggressive than an Alaska bear hunting guide? A a guy who takes people in the bush to hunt bear in Alaska and maybe die. And yet somehow Peter Goodwin went well beyond that. Peter opened a hunting and fishing lodge in a remote part of Alaska. It was on one of these expeditions that his idea for Groove Life took shape. Peter wanted a wedding band that could stand up to his active lifestyle. So in 2015, Peter started a Kickstarter campaign to make this ring a reality. From that small start, the company has skyrocketed. They now have over 150 employees. They've relocated to Nashville, Tennessee. They are taking the world by storm. I just toured their facility. I saw more silicone rings I could possibly dream of. They're wonderful. God bless America. Groove Life has become much more than just a ring company. It's an adventure lifestyle brand. So I'm here with Peter. Thanks for having me, Peter. Wow, thanks for being here. Would you be our new spokesman? That was great. If you take me to Alaska to hunt bear, <laughs> let's start right That's there. That's what everybody let's says. Let's start like, right I there. Don't, I don't have to pay him. I just have to take him to Alaska. I mean, and, uh, this is amazing to me. Uh, you you started a business. You, you actually hauled in your own equipment and built a lodge in Alaska. Talk, we'll talk about that. There's a little story behind that. It wasn't just one day I woke up in middle America. I, I was uh, born in Alaska. Uh, and my family has been in the tur- tourism business for uh, since the 60s. They, you know, they're kind of aging and getting older. And I saw an opportunity in the ecotourism. We still did hunting and fishing, but adventure tours, bear viewing, mountain climbing, uh, whitewater rafting in remote Alaska, 150 miles from Anchorage, no roads. That's kind of uh, fly in only. So, yeah, we uh, started our lodge. Um, and built it there. It was remote, lived off a generator in a small little... You're flying in materials to build a lodge. Well, we were actually surrounded by a national park, so you couldn't cut any trees down. 
Uh, but we actually hauled in all of our equipment on a DC-6, which is an old World War II plane. Um, and uh, we built it, four of us, 8,000 square feet. And and we ran that lodge for many, many years. And um, Groove Life kind of came out of that uh, in a in a kind of a funny roundabout way, but as a side project. Okay, and, uh, back to construction. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. This is, I, everything about you is fascinating. I have a total man crush on Mostly you. Mostly my I, let's eyes, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that beard. <laughs> but let's let's stay on the construction thing. So you guys are mixing concrete by hand and just making your own footers and everything? Or what's going on right. there? Right, yeah. So there was, uh, we'd fly in our cement and then mix it with the gravel out there. Yeah, it was wild. It, it was ground up. So um, some guy flies in on your planes. You got a plane that fly people in on these things. Correct. They fly in and you take them to kill a cute little bear. Right. The bears, just so everybody knows, bears are very managed in Alaska. There's a certain number that are taken, certain ma- uh, males. Uh, and since they've actually started managing, uh, you know, like in the 50s, I guess, the bear population's actually stabilized because the cubs, because bear, uh, a boar, a uh, male bear, uh, wants to, you know, make love with his, with his sow. Well, when she has children, cubs, that's preventing him. So he'll kill her cubs, follow her around until she comes back in a heat wow. and then breed her. And that's just the way God made things. He will for, kill his own cubs. Or he'll kill, he doesn't care. He just wants to, you know, he wants to have sex. Do his thing. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, he'll, he, so the sows, that's why they're so aggressive is they're always protecting mostly against boars. So anyway, in the hunting world, if you can take out a lot, you know, a certain portion of the males, then the cubs survive and the population's health here. So, yeah, so we don't just, you know, we're not bloodthirsty just killing anything we see. It's very managed. So Bears fascinate me. They totally fascinate me. And have you had any bear close scares? I've had many, many uh, close calls. Give us a couple. I had to sleep inside a dead carcass of a bear once. Oh, come uh, on. You did not. I did. You slept inside of a dead carcass bear. I had to. Oh, you were my the client. dream guest for me. And it was before the, how, how the Revenant this happen? came out. Did you kill was, this? It, was it the Revenant? Was it the, Rev, the one where Leonardo? Oh, before the Revenant? I was like, that guy, he copied me. What but happened? I think I copied Luke Skywalker because I think he did it back in the 70s. How did this happen? Um, so we were with a client. Um, I was with a client. We were on a 12th day, I think. And we were, it, we were, you know, when you go bear hunting, it's not like deer hunting in a stand. You drive your four wheeler up. It's not like hunting in Africa where you're shooting animals out of the back of a jeep while you're smoking a stogie. You get dropped off in a small bush plane and with a tent, and you're out there for ten or twelve days. And a lot of times you don't even make it back to your tent at night because you've hiked so far away and it's too dark to get back. So you just you just bivy whack it up, you know, on the side of the mountain there. Um, so these guys are uh, that I take are mostly executives uh, because it's an expensive hunt. It's very logistically um, intense, just even the travel. So so we we're on this twelfth day of this hunt and we see a bear. We um, uh, it's a long story, but the, the bear kind of mocks charges. It realizes we're it, it thinks we're another bear because we're rustling around, and then it takes off. We end up shooting the bear. Um, then my client's gun failed. I was able to get one shot off, but we tracked the bear for three hours and the bear knows we're behind it it's backtracking on itself and following and doing different routes and i know the bear is going to charge us like i just know it's coming um he would always stop at the tops so of these little knolls and wait for us to come from the bottom so anyway we we ended up harvesting that bear uh pretty dramatically he he was waiting and we shot him and my client shot him in the eyeball at about 10 feet oh my gosh and the, the muzzle blast it was getting dark blinded us because of the fire came out of the end of the barrel. And then the bear, we didn't know we hit it, but it was silent. You know, it was like, boom, your ears are ringing, you can't see. It's like a flashbang. And it's silent, and I'm like, the, I'm just ready. I'm ready. I had my gun like this because I'm ready for him to jump on me, and I was going to shoot straight up. And uh, nothing, silence for like five minutes. And we just, no, but we didn't move. It was dark, 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 and we made. We started throwing st- sticks and making noise, trying to get something to move. And so we we finally found him. He they, he, had, he had harvested him, but w- that was dark. It was it was in October, so it was probably getting dark around seven o'clock, two a.m. We finished. So anyway, we we uh, it was we were hypothermic thermic by the time it was sleeting. It was like thirty two degrees and sleeting and blowing sideways. And where we hunted on the Alaska Peninsula, there's no trees. It's only uh, big bushes called alder, alder bushes. So you can't make a fire or anything like that. So we, we, had, to, we had to sleep out there. We uh, ended up getting next to the carcass and then pulling the, the, uh, 
the, the skin, the bear hide over us, and we shivered all night long. And so hypothermia, you know, first wow. stage is, you know, sh- control, uncontrollable sh- shivering. And then and you get in the next stage, which you stop shivering. And, and so our whole goal was to stay up and keep shivering. It was so miserable. Uh. Um, but it was definitely not warm, like climb inside and, you know. <laughs> So warm in here. <laughs> I'm gonna put some intestines around my neck. <laughs> That's That'd right, be right. wonderful. Yeah, right. I'd like. Can I have the liver as my pillow? Uh, <laughs> but but we survived and got out uh, the next day and had to hike about five miles out. But it was uh, it was very intense. It was hypothermia is your biggest danger up there in the fall, especially At any time in Alaska. Hypothermia is always. But here's the deal. Just so everybody knows, you should never die of hypothermia if you have food because mm. food is warmth. If you have food, you have fuel, and you can move. And if you have fuel, then you can, you, if, you, if you can move, just get up and run, do push-ups. You run out of food or water, you're toast. You're done. So. so you go to Alaska, you build this thing out of nothingness in the bush, you're hunting, and are, are you a single guy at this point? Um, yeah, early on in my guide career, I got married in 2008, and then we moved up to Alaska full-time in 2010. And I seasonally, right? So I'm seasonally guiding uh, because Alaska, you don't guide all year round. And then I was seasonally doing construction. So I was always into building houses or, or you know, trimming out houses, doing cabinets, whatever it took. Because I love, I love guiding. I've always, uh, you know, to see a, a person come to the Alaska wilderness for the first time is like, it's almost like watching them, I don't know, see heaven. It's like they get off the plane and they're so remote and there's, they've just seen the most beautiful things, glaciers, bears, you know. It, 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 you're like going into Narnia, and then you land at our lodge, and you just get out, and you just to see that and then take them on experiences and push them and watch Alaska break people down um, in a way that it's it's not a forceful breaking. It's like it's it's kind of like you're, you know, when you when you first, you know, like submit to God, it's, it's not like he browbeat you into submission. You're just like, this is better. Mm. This is better. Yeah. And that's how it is in Alaska. It's like, this is better. This is amazing. So that was, um, I don't know how I got off on that. It's a like, really romantic little note there. But it was <laughs> romantic. But it was. It I was, want to hold your hand right now. <laughs> Just don't sit in my lap. I've wanted uh, to do, uh, who, who does not want to sit in the lap of an Alaskan bear guy? Are you kidding me? Come over here, big boy. Sit in my lap right now. It's not now. great yet. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we. I don't know where I was going with that, other than um, I miss it terribly. Well, I want to. I want to. I want to come back to. I want to come back to your wife in a moment because yeah. there's some story there. But take me then from how you go from being Alaska guide, building a lodge, to now having one of the most impressive businesses. I've ever seen startup business. I don't, I don't even know if you'd call yourself a small business anymore. I think, <laughs> I think your revenue is too big to be classified as a small business. But tell us about Groove Life. Yeah, so Groove Life's interesting. I I'd always traded my time for money, right? I I you know grew up, went to school, went to college, and went uh, just and and loved guiding so much that I just made that my career early on. I'm 39 now, so when I was 35. Um, I was sitting at my lodge and a, and a good friend of mine, he says to me, uh, we're having dinner. He's like, uh, I was like, hey man, how's it going? He's like, oh, it's going great. Uh, he said, I'm selling selfie sticks on the internet. And I'm like, man, um, I'm sorry. You know, like times are tough. You know? <laughs> sorry, it sucks to be you. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I don't even know what that means. Is What's a selfie stick? And uh, this is when they first kind of came out. And uh, I was thinking, used books on eBay. That's what I heard. I'm selling used books on eBay from a garage sale because I was just thinking, you know, that's what people did when they need to make extra cash. So he comes in, he says that, and he's like, I'm like, oh man, you know, you know, trying to be nice, you know? And he's like, yeah, we just crossed a million dollars in 10 months, a million dollars. So it was one of those, I, my, I lived my whole life thinking one way. And then I, I, I had a paradigm shift like that of like, this guy, I know this guy. He works on the North Slope uh, up in the oil fields in Alaska, two weeks on, two weeks off. Um, and he just started this business, and he's selling a million dollars in 10 months. I mean, I just, it just blew my mind. So his suggestion, which is what I give everybody now, is find a product that you, um, that you use that you can improve on and then tell a different story to a different set of people than your competition. All right, this is where you're going to make somebody who's listening 
who actually wants to do something they hear a lot of money. Right. Seriously, you could be listening to this podcast right now going, oh, oh, I like the interesting thoughts. You could also literally change your life right now. Right now. Give me the three steps again. So it's, it's uh, find a product that you use, that you, uh, that you, you know, like, right? In, figure out a way to improve it and tell a different story to a different set of people than your competition. Okay. And right? That- so here's what we did. So at that point, Silicon Rings had been out since 2006. A company called Safe Rings had come out with them. And then a, a larger company came in <coughs> and kind of made it more popular. Um, but they were speaking to Southern California and kind of gym rats and CrossFitters and just, just that crowd. So being who I was, I spoke. Um, well, first off, I had a problem with my silicone ring. It made my fingers sweat profusely. And it gave me, because uh, I'm in and out of water all the time. I'm sweating, just being, you know, manual labor, uh, guiding and stuff. Um, I, I just always had to take it off and rub it and, you know, keep, you know, keep it dry. So I was like, well, if I could make it breathable, then that's improving it, right? So it doesn't have to be a massive improvement. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just make it, you have to have a different story. Mm. It's all about story. People buy off story. Uh, they, if it's not a commodity, a commodity is a commodity, but if, if you want to sell a brand or sell something for a higher price point, you have to have a better story. So I, I put the grooves on the inside. We 3D printed it. Uh, I had it, uh, drawn AutoCAD, 3D printed it, wore it. I gave it to all my guides, like six, four, five, six guys. And uh, the guides all wore it, and they're like, hey, this thing actually works really good. So then we had the molds made. We kickstarted it. But we, I took the silicone ring. I made it better. I spoke to my demographic, which were hunters, fishermen, outdoor adventurers, guides, you know, kind of the – I always call it the Yeti, the Yeti crowd. That's how Yeti started. Oh, say that name again. Yeti. Oh, Yeti. Yeti. Oh. So, so, like, Yeti started I, – I was one of their pro staffers, like, up in Alaska. They – they because uh, I was a guide, they gave all the guides, you know, big discounts because they wanted the guides to be out on the water talking to their clients about them, right? Because they yeah. wanted you from Ohio that's not a guide to think – Yeti's the only, you know, and, and you always buy what your guide has. So they spoke, they 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 made a better product. Several, I'm all over the place here, but Yeti made a better product. They spoke to a different demographic, and they told a better story. So um, same thing with with Groove. I spoke to my demographic, and I and I and it was different than my competition. That's it. When you're selling to the world, you don't need billions of people to buy your product. You really don't even need millions of people to buy your product. I mean, you need like thousands of people. And there's billions of people in the world. I mean, we have people from Sri Lanka buying our rings all the time. I mean, Sri Lanka? I I mean, I know where that is. Amazing. (laughs) Give us the metrics. Just some brief metrics. A lot of people are going to Google Groove Life in a little bit. But so that get, like, your your trajectory the last few years is utterly startling. Right. I won't share specific revenue numbers, but I will say that we raised $18,000. The first year in business, we did an amount. that was that was very. I mean, most companies would love to have. We did that same amount this year in one day on Black Friday. Mm. So just to give you some perspective there, wow. we've grown be- around two hundred fifty percent per year every year. We'll be on the Inc. five hundred this year in the in the top one hundred companies. So. Tell me about Mossy Oak and how you made mistakes and how you kind of aggressively made it right. Tell that story. I just learned this one about an hour yeah, ago. Yeah. So the Mossy Oak thing was interesting. I love Mossy Oak. I've always worn their camouflage. And, you know, they approached me at a trade show. And they're like, can you boot camouflage on, on your rings? We love your rings. I was like, um, yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> and they were like, great. We'll send a contract over. So I had no idea how I was going to do it. I didn't know. But I knew I could. I knew there was a way to figure out how to get it on there. I mean, you've seen Mossy Oak on cars for heaven. I mean, they're wrapping guns and cars. Surely, I'll figure out how to For those who don't know, it's, it's something that's green, and it's, it's bossy, and yeah. it's oaky. It's a, it's a camouflage. Mossy it's got oak. leaves on it and trees, and, you know, that deer hunters use it a lot. And people kill things who wear it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. So we said yes. We went, um, so I signed the contract with them and paid them. I paid them a royalty up front. Um, but I had never even printed a ring yet, or um, uh, hydrographed a ring, hydro, hydro dipped a ring. And so we, we went uh, over overseas and we tried to figure it out. So then at the same time, Cabela's made an order, right? They were like, oh, you have Mossy Oak? We'll put an order in for that. I was like, yeah, great. 
And so they gave me, I don't know, 90 days to fulfill the order. And it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. A lot. Still didn't have any rings yet. So we went to work and it didn't end well. Like this story isn't like, we went to work and we figured it out. <laughs> we went to work and we bombed it out bad. Anyway, we, it was Christmas. Cabela's makes a massive order. People online are going crazy for the rings and every ring failed. Every ring, the camouflage rubbed off in like a day. <laughs> and I'm, I'm the, seriously, this almost took down the whole company because this is going to cost me half a million dollars. Easy. But I said to myself, well, because we, I live by a certain set of values, right? And, 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 and I'm not going to waver from those. So um, Groove's mission is to serve people, in, inspire, adventure, and reflect God. So I'm like, if I'm, if I'm a dirty marketing asshole here, I'm just going to be like, sorry, guys, you know, screw you. We'll take our money and go. But I was like, if I'm really here to live out my mission to love people and serve God, then I have to do the right thing. And it's like, it's not my company. We'll get into this later, but I don't view Groove as my company. It's just, I'm just a steward of this, you know, it's like a piece of land he's given me. It's just, I'm stewarding it. And so I have to do what's right um, because I, I, I have a holy fear that if I muck this up, like it's going away and my influence is going away and for him. And like that's – I want my son to look at my, me in my eye when I'm on my deathbed and be like, good job, Dad. You finished strong. Mm. You know? And for me to do that, it's not about the money at the end of the day. It's about how many, how many people right. I served and loved and had impact over. So we went and said we replaced every one of those rings without making people pay shipping. We contacted Cabela's, got their list, sent rings out to everybody, and it cost me an arm and a leg. But I was telling you earlier, that month, that next month, that was in April of, uh, I think, 16 or 17, 17, that month we doubled our revenue because it, it went viral and, and not, you know, like you wouldn't have heard about it, but in kind of the certain circles, it went like this company's giving us, like people went nuts. Wow. They loved it because wow. we treated them the golden rule, right? right. <laughs> Treat people like you want to be treated. So, and that, honestly, we, we were profitable again the next month, just like that. Wow. So it was cool. I, I think all, all that to say is not that you're n not going to fail. In fact, here's how I live my life now. Like I, I yearn for failure because the faster I can fail, the faster I'm going to learn how to succeed. So we do product development all the time and we do different ad testings. And I, I'm trying to, so the key is to fail really small to mitigate the, the, the size of the failure. Most people in life go all in on something without getting good data, without seeking wisdom, without, without, you know, without figuring out if it's gonna work. I see this all, with entrepreneurs all the time. We do, we do lots of consulting for entrepreneurs and they're like, I've got this idea and I've been sitting on it for four years, you know, making it the best ever before I launch it. I'm like, what the F are you doing yes. with your life? Yes. Put it on Kickstarter and people will tell you if it sucks or not and then you can move on with your life. Right. Do Get fast. moving. Get Do moving. It fast. Move. Succeeding is not about thinking. Succeeding yeah. is about moving. <laughs> moving. 100%. And moving means pain a lot of times. It means pain. And, but you've got to disconnect your, your uh, identity from your idea. And you've got to be totally okay with your ideas sucking. And then selling people what they want. Do you think I really want to sell a silicone ring? I'd rather be a hunting guide, bush pilot in Alaska. But guess what? The market for what I did up there was... Uh, hundreds of people a year. <laughs> Dude, you're dropping truth bombs left and right. Separate your identity from your idea. So I, I take what you're saying there is we should be holding loosely to the things that we're creating. And if our ideas or things we're creating are failing, that might get us to a new place. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that I'm a failure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, again, if you can, I had a guy tell me one time, he said he, he was the best sale, like door to door sa book salesman in the country. And I was like, what is your secret? He said, I sucked like everybody else did selling books because I just kept getting no, 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 you know, and every now and then I get a yes. So he said, he said, my only goal was to get a yes. I saw it every day. How many yeses can I get? You know, like everybody else. He said, all I did to become the number one is I said, I'm going to get a hundred no's before I stop today. Hmm. Set. He changed the conversation, he changed the paradigm. He was going for yeses, he changed to noes. He's like, and guess what I learned? For every 20 noes, I got a yes. So every day I sold five sets of books mm. across the country. But he was like, I wouldn't stop. Even if I got 10 yeses, I wouldn't stop till I got 100 noes or whatever. I mean, 50 noes, I can't remember the number exact. All that to say is uh, movement and action is, is the success. 
and ident- not, not identifying with your failure, but using that as kind of a badge of honor. Have you always been somebody who moved or was there a, an aha moment that you had earlier on? So in your I, life? I um, no, I was not always someone that moved. I always was like stuck with my comfort zone. I mean, honestly, my comfort zone is flying bush planes and, and hunting bears in Alaska. Like I, that's that's my happy. That's place. such a comfortable life. I mean, only place. people who've checked well, out it's, actually it's, fly planes it's, it's in desolate <laughs> areas and kill things that could kill you. That that's so passive that you would do that. Yeah, I'm I'm a passive person. No, it, but you you whatever you grow up doing is kind of what you think is normal, right? In Alaska, the fact that I'm a hunting guy in Alaska is like yawn. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it like oh yeah, my uncle is, my dad is, I am, whatever. It, down here, it's it's nostalgic and, and it has this wild moment. But in Alaska, it's just normal. So all I have to say is like guiding was just easy for me because I grew up in it. I grew up doing it. I watched my uncle do it. I watched my cousins do it. They I had a job right at you know high school, college doing it. Um, it was just it was it was wasn't a lot of risk to it. Um, this has been much more risky and out of my comfort zone in every way. Mm. Um, so there was a point where I identified. My limiting belief. You can make a, a liability out of every asset you have. I'm too rich. I'm too poor. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too pretty. I'm too ugly. You just, that's just, we have this, we like to tell ourselves stories so that we don't have to risk. That's just how we are. So my limiting belief, which I didn't know consciously what it was, but I wanted that, it was that God wanted me to fail. Hmm. I, I was suffered with depression in my early mid twenties uh, for four or five years, really bad, really bad. I mean, I, I um, suicidal thoughts and, and all the medication at, at points. And, but I was so close to God in that time. Like all I had was God. I didn't have a family. I didn't. I wasn't dating anyone. I just. I was depressed, and I didn't know what I was doing on this earth. What is my purpose? What is my mission? I'm this person. I. I'm still guiding and making money, and you know, doing con- construction. But I didn't have a purpose. I just was effing doing going through the motions and i didn't care i've never really cared a lot about money so it wasn't like i was just trying to buy more stuff um i just formed this relationship with god that was just i mean i just it was amazing so in my mind my sick way of uh, i think satan planted it i don't know i don't know how it all works but i thought i needed to suffer to be close to god and being close to god is the most important thing on earth and so I would always kind of self-sabotage myself, honestly. I would start, I would do the lodge, I'd do uh, construction. The, the guiding life yeah. sounds romantic, but it's seasonal. Yeah. So it's like you're, you're three or four or five months in the seasonally and then construction. You're never really building anything big. And um, I know I'm kind of all over the place, but it, that was a— the, dude, when this I uncovered that When I uncovered that God is for me, um, and again, it's a longer conversation, um, that was the next month I started Groove. Mm. Wow, that was it, dude. This is this is this is really huge. I, I I ask God a lot. How is it? Why is it that the most influential, richest people that could actually fund your work and do things that you want to have happen seem to have zero faith at all? I'm I'm talking about worldwide. The right. richest, richest. I get it. And I think you're you're on to the reason why. Because if you're in the Christian faith, there is a limiting belief that is taught from pulpits. If it's not taught from pulpits, it's drunk in the coffee that's served to churches that says, if your life is going well, you must be doing something wrong. Right. You're living in the world. You're not. You're right. in the world, not of. Because blah, if blah, you're blah, close blah. to God, then you should be shipwrecked. And you yeah. should be out in the middle of Africa naked, right. trying to print Bibles out of papyrus leaves right. or something like that. There's this. There's this inbred cynicism towards anyone that is doing well or a church that's even growing. Oh no, they're growing. Something weird is happening with that thing that's growing. And if that's our limiting belief, which by the way is no place in the Bible, no place at all, of course, of course, the most effective people starting business degree, people who don't have any faith because they don't have that limited belief, which by the way, isn't part of the Christian faith. Not at all. I love you unpeeling this. Yeah. Jesus said, greater things will you do. Right. He didn't say, if you do something great, then I'm gonna greatly smack you down. Right. He said, greater things will you do. Right. Preach to us more, man. Come on now. I got the Alaskan <laughs> guide who's making freaking silicone rings. Right. Giving me truth here. That's it. I'm a, I make silicone rings for a living, which is another story we should get into. It's an amazing story. Um, here's what I tell all my people. Like, um, I demand excellence. I mean, if we're going to do something, if we're going to carry the God banner, the God banner is not an excuse to be half ass 
to be sucky, which most Christians use it for. I Just like never I will hire to. a subcontractor to do anything that's a for Christian? me that has, has a fish on that has a fish on the no, card. No. Forget it. Because they're a like, fish well, on the you're done. You're well, done. The, uh, yeah, like you're done. Um, I'm not stressed today, you. and I'm praying. No, at the yeah, church don't pray. Don't like... pray. I need your freaking <laughs> hang drywall. Is what I need. I don't care. Your fish thing is no. So we at Groove, we. I mean, I, my everybody will tell you, like I, the customer is everything because it's about people, right? And we will be the best, like Chick Fil A, like lo love them or hate them uh, on their beliefs. They're the best freaking sandwich in the world. I mean, like you, you, McDonald's next to a Chick Fil A. Look at the line. It's not even. I mean, right. th I think the average McDonald's does 1.5 million. Three times they do. Yeah, three it's like times four and a half million. Yeah. I sit. It's unbelievable. Why is that? It's, it's not because they're Christians that you go to Chick Fil A. It's because they're freaking awesome. And their their systems and processes, and so now they have a platform to to have their little plaque on the wall, because you're just like, wow, that was a different experience. That was unbelievable, and that's what we strive for here at Group. So we um, we have lifetime warranty on all our products, and I, that costs me so much money per year, mm. but I don't care because it's about people. And when you serve people, it's the weirdest thing. It's like opposite of what you think. When you serve people and don't worry about the money, the money just it's just just comes and comes and comes <laughs> because people will open up their pocketbook to you if they trust you mm. and and you add value to their life. Mm. And so what we do here at Groove is we try to try, I mean, oddly enough, we have a silicone ring. Seems like a kind of a silly product in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I'm not, you know, curing I mean, cancer. That's a great product. You, you cured me from broken fingers and all <laughs> right, that stuff. I, right. I previously cut off two or three previous wedding rings. Because, really? I, yeah, I would jam my, my knuckle and it'd swell up. Yeah. I got to cut this thing off now right. or else I'm going to lose my finger. Right. And uh, no, man, it's, it's a big it's, deal. It's a valuable product. And, and I, hey, man, I wear them. I love them, obviously. But a lot of people, millions of people wear them. But the, pro the, the thing is, is like each one of us has been given influence, even if it's small, even if you're working at a small office somewhere and you only work five people, you have influence over them. Be, be, be faithful to that. And, and God will, you know, who knows what he's going to do. Mm. Let's go off the board here. <clears throat> Let's go back to something I know. I think a lot of our folks are just wondering. All right, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got, there's a guy here who has a wife <laughs> and you get your wife to go live in Alaska where it's dark mm. nine months out of the year and where there's no movie <laughs> theaters, there's no Starbucks, there's right. no, no you, and and by the way, she, she doesn't have you know, hair coming out of her nose. She's not like Alaskan bushwoman. No, no. she's. She, I, I met her. She's. Yeah. 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 Easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just stop right there. Uh, she, th this woman then says, "I'm going to support you by thinking that people are going to put rubber rings on their fingers." And uh, how how do you get a woman to do whatever you want them to do? <laughs> <laughs> Give us the this secret to that. Right here, it's coming. Yeah. Um, so no, my wife. Um, my wife is a professional. She's a veterinarian. You wouldn't know that she lived in the bush and had, and had babies naturally, you know, at our house. Oh, my gosh. So, that also happened? Yeah, man. She's, she's oh, awesome. Oh, man. But anyway, I met her uh, at Auburn. She was uh, finishing up vet school, and I just happened to be coming through there and met her. And So she's Southern Southern girl all the way. We got married. Um, I'm still doing the seasonal guiding thing. And, and I have this – people ask me all the time, you know, like, how did you get – you know, every man just wants their wife to blindly follow them, you know. Um, but the problem is, is that our wives know us more than anybody else. And so guys, I think are super, it, it's super intimidating to try to lead your wife because, because how are you supposed to lead this person that knows you? It's easy to come to work for me to lead all these people because they don't know who I am. Right. They see my the wife, leader guy. My the wife's leader like, guy. this guy is a 12 year old in a 25 <laughs> or 35 year old body. He wants to play video games. And I think it's super intimidating. So uh, we, we, were, we, we lived in Nashville for uh, about a year and a half after we got married, and, and things were tough for her. God was working on her. Uh, she, got out of, she was working full time, and God started working on her life. And, and I was just praying, like, what do we do next, Lord? What, what's, I really want to move to Alaska. But I know I, I don't have the cojones just to be like, we're moving to Alaska, woman. You know, get on board. You know, she'd laugh at me and because she's a strong woman. She's, uh, she's independent. And, but she started to see me submitting to God about our future. 
and we I would pray with her about it, which by the way is super intimidating for any it man. It is. It's why very few guys right. ever instigate prayer with right. their wives. Which is one of the most amazing things you could ever do with your wife. Yes, it is. Ever. If you want to go to the next level, next level. do that. It is hyper intimate. And and here's the thing. Side note, praying your wife with your wife is not about leading, it's about submitting to God. And when and it, and it ties in here. When a woman sees her husband submitting to God and leading the family, not out of bravado and I've got a great idea and you're going to follow me dominance, but out of submission on his knees before God, no woman in the world will not follow that. Mm. Women have usually so better ideas. she may ideas. not have a submission problem. He has a submission problem. Right. He does. And he thinks he's got to do it on himself. And that's what I say to everybody. The gospel is that it's not your life. It's not. So I don't look. It's not my family. They're not my kids. It's not my wife. This is not my business. This is not my life. I am not responsible to make any of these things work. God's the provider, emotionally, physically, spiritually, for every one of those things. So when you wake up and kind of live your life like that, you're like, okay, this is God's. All of this is God's, and I'm just a steward. And you're like, I'll do whatever you want me to do and go wherever you want me to go. Um, And your wife sees you do that, she'll follow you to the ends of the earth. And she's not following you. That's the great mystery. She's not. She's following God Mm. through you. So from the outside, people are like, wow, she just followed him off into the bush, you know? No, 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 no. Whenever it got hard in Alaska, which it did many times, I'd look at her and say, I want you to stop. Stop. You did not follow me up here. Because she, she'd always pull the card. She's a human. Yeah, I followed you up here, and I got it. I was like, bullshit. You followed God up here just like me. And I'm having a hard time, too. But we're in this together, and I don't know what the story looks like. But he's writing it. You're not the freaking author, and neither am I. He's the author. We're characters in his book and his story. Mm. But my wife follows Jesus Christ, and I follow Jesus Christ. And we're more united than her just following me. That's brilliant. So, Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's do a lightning round. Oh, boy. Let's do a lightning round. <laughs> I'm going to ask you something, and you got to give me something in three sentences or less. All right? Are okay. you ready? Okay. I have no idea what you're about to say. Here we go. Book I should read. Um, Thou Shalt Prosper. It's by a Jewish. Rabbi uh, Dan Jewish rabbi. Lappin. Yep. Oh. Un- unbelievable. Oh, man. Dude, you, you and I are like mind melded. This is really crazy. All right. Okay. Gun I should buy. All around gun or just the specific? Uh, no, just uh, uh, you, you answered the way. I that- would suggest buying an over under 20 or 12 gauge so that you can go uh, start skeet shooting, which is very cheap, inexpensive, and a great camaraderie. Great. Skeet shooting. Best camping tip. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, sleep with earplugs. That's the best Dude, camping come trip on. in the Yes. So, when I was in, I quick, take extra and I pass them out to people, yes. whatever I'm with. You want these. It's, it's the game changer. When I, even when you're in Alaska, which you're like, I want to hear bears and everything, you don't want to hear that. Like, just come in and eat me. Yes. I need a night's sleep. Because after, when I was a guide, it was like 30 days of not sleeping. The first year I guided when I, right out of high school, full time, it was like, I haven't slept. Because I'm hearing everything. My mind's like, I, and at the end of the season, I put those in. And now I'm like, well, like, if they get magical, me, they get me. utterly magical. Yeah. <laughs> how to please a woman? Um, I will say how to please my wife. Be kind. Yeah, I say I asked her the other day. I was like, when am I most attractive to you? You know, she's like, when you're kind, and when you make me laugh. How to motivate employees? Give them a bigger purpose than themselves and then what they're doing. How to see opportunities. Um, have your eyes open. Always think how you can make something better. Or who is not being served by that product? We're selling again. You're not selling to your local food mart here, or you know, local community. You're selling to the world. All right, boys and girls. I think that wraps up another episode of the Aggressive Life. If you want to, people want to follow you, Peter, because you got a lot of cool things going. Where can we follow you? Follow up with you? See what else you got going on? Yeah. So it's GrooveLife.com. G R O O V L Life Life. And then um, I don't really do a lot on social, but it's Peter Mark Goodwin on Instagram, and um, I think Peter Mark Goodwin on Facebook. You don't do a lot of social. You've got a YouTube adventure channel. I you do. Swimming, a- swimming with white sharks without a cage. Not right. white sharks. Swimming with sharks Shark, without a cage yeah, yeah, as one episode. So yeah. you've got some stuff we, going we on. We have there. done the. Uh, we do have the adventure channel. Uh, so check that out on YouTube. 
we do uh, crazy adventures all over the country, all over the world. Um, one a month, we take somebody that has not. Uh, we take kind of a, a guy that's stuck in the cubicle, and we pay for the whole trip and let him do things. But we've done everything from bull riding to skydiving, paramotoring, wow. noodling for catfish, wing walking on the biplane. Um, we've wow. done snow machine in Alaska. Would you take somebody who's like stuck in a pastoring job to a place yeah. like Alaska to have bear? Would you take somebody uh, like that? Maybe you have to apply. I have uh, to apply. Yeah, I, I might know I try somebody not to who to hang around many pastors, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I might make an exception. <laughs> All right, Peter. Hey, this has been fantastic. All right, guys, women, everybody here, you've got a guy who's given us a lot of stuff. He wants to help you be more aggressive. If you do some of the stuff that he's talked about today, your life is going to be different. Let's, let's go. Chop, chop. Let's go do things instead of think things. Welcome to The Aggressive Life. Well, hey, if you like Peter, let me tell you something. You're going to like his ring even more. <laughs> you know, the Groove Life ring. I've been wearing it for quite some time, and, and it's good. It works. I never have to take it off. Peter, a uh, good, generous man that he is. He's chosen to give just us here at The Aggressive Life 15% off. If you want a Groove ring or a watch band, you can go to the Groove Life website and put in Tome 15, 15% off. Tome 15 at checkout, and you are all set up. For more aggressive living, head over to bryantome.com. Get signed up for the mailing list to get regular shots of positive aggression sent straight to your inbox. And while you're there, you can also find articles, podcasts, and books. I'm also active on Instagram. Search Brian Tome. Special thanks to the band judges for the music. Aggressive Life with Brian Tome is a production of Crossroads Church, Cincinnati, Ohio.